So this is our lecture on repertoire and score preparation analysis. So let's get started. Um, <clears throat> starting with repertoire. So a good place to start with looking for repertoire, of course, is asking your fellow choir directors. Um, they have posted lists everywhere with a GMEA. Um, ACDA is the American Choral Directors Association. So that will be a good thing to also join and also to peruse there. But of course, we have IMSLP. Um, oh, there it is, IMSLP. And you can look up anything, of course. And But then you also have um, Choral Wiki, which is IMSLP, but for choir only. And so um, you can just peruse these sites. Um, you can go with two-part choir, three-part choir, so forth and so on. But if I were you, I would start on GMEA or ACDA's website in order to gauge um, the level, the grade level, if you will, at which your choir can sing so that nothing you're not programming anything too hard or too easy so they won't get bored. Great. There it is. Cool. Um, <clears throat> and so you have differing types of choir. So, of course, you have soprano alto. You have tenor bass. Uh, men's choruses are huge. People love those for some odd reason. Baba Shop Quartet, which we looked at earlier this semester. Show choir. Show choir exists a lot in middle school, sometimes in high school, but it's very, very competitive. And so if you um, are trying to promote a show choir, which totally go for it, um, it's going to be in the more music theater style of singing. There's some classical singing, but it's mostly music theater style of singing, and you will want to hire a choreographer for that. Absolutely. If your school has a dance teacher, I'm sure they, he, she would love to do it. Um, another type of uh, ensemble is just a music theater ensemble, right? Just to do music theater songs. Um, I'm sure that at most schools now, they, at most public schools, they do have a music theater class in which the person will have to sing or they'll put like on a scenes program, which I did in high school as well. So um, be prepared for that. Just get your mind thinking. Madrigal choir. So um, like if you're wanting to do like a madrigal choir to do Christmas carols or to do early Renaissance music, that type of thing is a thing. Um, vocal jazz is huge ever since pentatonics, which, uh, but vocal jazz is really coming to the forefront. It's really difficult to do because it's a ton of ear training um, in terms of like minor third versus major third. Um, what kind of chord is this? Is it diminished, fully diminished? So you'll be diving into lots of music theory with your kids with that. Of course, you have regular SATB music, which like the Vivaldi is an SATB music, opera choruses, um, dealing with high school, I wouldn't do, op I would not do opera choruses in elementary or middle school, but it's totally doable for high school, and I would stick with Gilbert and Sullivan, and I'll write that down for you. Gilbert and Sullivan, they wrote operettas, so operettas in music history, um, it is at the beginning of the 19th century, um, and Gilbert and Sullivan are both English composers. They both hated each other. They had a hate-hate working relationship, but they composed a lot of great music for younger singers in English um, to sing opera choruses, and they're, it's good for young singers, it's good for older singers, it's good for literally for anyone. Um, I will warn you that there may be some controversial material be, be based on the times and based on where we are with keeping it politically correct, but it's some really good music. And then, of course, you will also be training your singers for solo music, like when they go to um, governor's school auditions or uh, honors chorus auditions. Um, and we'll talk more about engaging students in music they don't like, but we already talked about that, with controversial texts. Um, controversial text meaning like the religious side you'll have lots of people who are not christian they're jewish they're buddhist they're what have you and you'll just have to explain to them what we're doing this for music sake we're not trying to convert you um that has nothing to do with anyone's beliefs 
but rather just presenting them with musical material because you must explain to them that lots of composers within the Western uh, um, within the Western culture <clears throat> had to make their living by having a church job, by composing music for the church because the church had money, right? Most churches before the Reformation were Catholic. And so uh, most of our mass settings, most of our music is based on Catholic masses. Think about the Requiem, think about the St. Cecilia Mass, think about your B minor Mass by Bach. Um, those things are based on the Catholic liturgy. So that's why um, most of that music is the Christian uh, Judeo belief. So explain that to them and then that will give them a better understanding of, okay, well that makes more sense because composers had to make a living. Let's talk about score preparation and what goes into preparing a score for band, choir, orchestra, and musicals. Um, as the choir director, as the band director, um, you will be called upon to music direct the musical. So let's start with that. Music directing the musical meaning that you're just in there for the tail end. You, as the band director, will not be teaching any parts. All the parts will be taught to you. You'll be going in there, you'll be, um, you'll have a zitz probe, which literally is a German word. Write that down, so um, let's see, put uh, musical. For, so for the musical, you'll have a zitz probe, German word for um, sitting rehearsal. And so that's when everyone, your, or your orchestra or ensemble, and also your singers are sitting together and you're hearing, everyone's hearing the music for the first time. Um, <clears throat> and this is really good to gauge where you are musically and to divorce the music from what they're doing on stage, from what they're speaking. As the band director or as the orchestra conductor, you will be in charge of putting that force together. So that's lots of collaboration <clears throat> and meetings with the person who has prepared the chorus, the choir director most of the times, or it could be also the drama director. Um, and so you will have lots of score preparation just with that alone as a band director. So get into the um, uh, habit of looking at scores in score order with the choir parts, with the solo parts, with your markings, know what's going on there. Um, and so that's for you when you are the band director. Now, if you are preparing a musical as the choir director, <clears throat> sorry, we'll go back to the band director. Also, as the band director, you'll be conducting in rehearsals, oh, sorry, in rehearsals, um, like the last week of rehearsals, your tech week, and also for performances. Now, for the musical, if you are the choir director, you will be pro uh, pro uh, probably preparing the kids musically to sing this. So that means starting your rehearsals early in the semester, let's say the show's in May, um, getting together with the, of course, collaborating with the acting director and collaborating when are music rehearsals. Music rehearsals are typically the first thing that you do, like the first literal, literal two weeks, I do music rehearsals every single day. For you, it might be three or four weeks, depending on what you choose um, and um, how much training or musically prepared you want your students to be before they start getting on their feet to do dance rehearsals or to do acting rehearsals. Um, as the preparer, preparer of the music for the choir, for the voice, you will need to know piano skills, so start learning how to play the bass line and the voice part if it's solo, or voice parts if it's duets. Um, and then also for the uh, choir. I would strongly go against using canned music. Canned music is just having the show with pre-recorded music and that's just not educational, not fun at all. If I were you, I would also hire a pianist, a rehearsal pianist to be there daily to get the, um, so that you can solely be teaching from the score instead of worrying about your fingers. But you need to play through it so you can hear it for yourself. Do not rely solely on recordings. Okay, preparing a score for choir. 
the same thing happens. So always <clears throat> for band and choir um, and orchestra, always tune back and down to your bass line, right? Cantus firmus or your melody and bass line tuning all the time, all the time. Um, for choir, we're going through it with the Vivaldi. So knowing the language, knowing the pronunciation, doing this by yourself, speaking things by yourself so that you know how to teach things, having a lesson plan, um, starting with how you're going to warm them up. Are you going to warm them up differently based on what you're teaching that day? Yes. <laughs> and then how you will progress throughout the days, throughout the weeks, um, what you want them to learn and also retain and everything for that. Um, <clears throat> band, that's easy for you guys. You'll be transposing a lot with your instruments. Same thing with the orchestra, transposing a lot. Getting that alto clef for the viola, tenor clef for trombone, euphonium when used in orchestra and band, um, so forth and so on. Cool. Store, sorry, excuse me, score study <laughs> includes Roman numeral analysis, form analysis, character analysis, composer analysis, piece history, IPA if applicable, range and tessitura, and I'm going to stop there. So we, you know what Roman numeral analysis is, form, character analysis. What is the character trying to say? Is This is especially important in the musicals. Of course, I'm going to add something right now. Um, genre, so important, so important for musicals and opera, um, especially for musicals, because all musicals are in American genres, American art forms, so pop, jazz, rock and roll, country, those things. So you'll need to know what sounds, what timbres are involved in each of those uh, genres, and then how will you get that? Another question, why? Why is, did the composer compose this specific genre for this specific character. Um, are they, so let's say it's a country song for this music theater character. Is this person from the countryside? Are they from Louisiana, Georgia, South Carolina? Where are they from? Excuse me, or are they in a place where that sound is there? Is the character maybe from New York, but they're in Georgia, they're in Louisiana to get this country sound, Alabama? Um, so just things to think about in terms of putting the music with the plot together. Um, the character analysis, composer analysis, um, was the composer influenced? And we talked about that at length before. IPA, so of course, no need to IPA your English, but <clears throat> really consider, like we talked about R's, like Gloria instead of, right? We don't want Gloria, but Gloria, we want to get rid of the R because the R really taints or really ruins the musical line or our legato. Range, I'm not sure if we touched on this, but I'll touch on this now since you'll be doing this <clears throat> fairly soon. The range is the range of one voice part for the entire song. So the lowest pitch and the highest pitch. The tessitura is the are the notes that are the most repeated within a voice part in one song. So <clears throat> let's say the tenor part goes from C3 to E4. That's the range. But then let's say most of the notes, and you got to go through the entire score to the entire song for each song. Uh, let's say that the tessitura for the song, uh, for that same song, let's say most of the notes are B flats to uh, D. So that'll be your tessitura. B flat four, sorry, B flat three to D four. Um, and so you'll be doing that with the Vivaldi soon. Yay. All right. <clears throat> and then of course, uh, determine your tempo based on phrasing, range, tessitura, based also on the genre. And just based on like your feeling, if it's a walking tempo, what is your conductor walking tempo or the character's walking tempo if you're doing a show? Um, experiment with phrasing, dynamics, apexes. I encourage you to listen to lots of different interpretations, lots of recordings so that <clears throat> you can pick and choose what you like, but also 
always have a why behind that. Why did you choose that tempo? Why did you choose that dynamic marking or that phrase marking? Um, and look at then, of course, figure out how to teach it. Which challenges do you project that you will have with your given ensemble based on their age, their experience? Of course, encourage everyone to have private lessons in your high school. Bring someone in um, and have the students pay for it. Work something out. Because the more attention to detail or private lessons that your students have, the easier it is for you. And also, the more, the more uh, you can get into the nitty-gritty of after teaching those pitches, notes, rhythms. Because that'll be just, that should come second nature to them like it does to you now. Um, be able to play parts separately. So I would play soprano and alto parts together and tenor and bass notes together, both with the bass line. And then, of course, download your apps like Pitchpipe app, Metronome app, and Cam Scanner. I've been using Cam Scanner for a long time. Cam Scanner um, is a phone app <clears throat> that you can take pictures of a score or any piece of paper with, and you can just transport it to a PDF and then email it to people. Really simple, really quick. From your phone. Um, of course, and it's free, uh, but I think if you will... Um, use like an educational discount, like your UWG email address, then um, you have lots more space. They will provide you lots more space than if you provide like a, a, your personal email, hotmail, gmail, yahoo.com account. Okay, so um, Vivaldi prep score. So instead of doing your, um, your notebooks, your digital notebooks, we are going to do a Vivaldi score prep. So let's look at that and how that's going to factor in. All right. Um, so let's go to assessments, assignments. Let me go back. I'm sorry. I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's go to content, um, concept teaching rubric and items because you'll be doing that soon in a few weeks. Here's your concept teaching rubric, please. Let's read over that. You had the Vivaldi Gloria, but it's there just in case you need to print it or for reference. Okay, concept teaching rubric. So, um, and you can read this. You'll be working with a live accompanist, Justin, so please be kind. Please <clears throat> practice by saying, may we begin here, not let's start here, not can we, we cannot, may we. And always say thank you, not only to your pianist, but also to your chorus. Um, of course, always number your measures, but if the number, if the measures are not numbered, always go with, hey guys, let's start with page, da-da-da, system, da-da-da, measure, da-da-da, okay? Um, <clears throat> for the first five minutes of the rehearsal, you, sh you should, be, um, should be spent at the piano with you playing voice parts during the five minutes, 15 minutes for the whole sorry let me go back you will have 15 minutes in all the first five minutes you'll be doing spinning at the piano the last 10 minutes will be spent um with you on one of these concepts so i'll be i'll say hey so and so please focus on breathing as you are teaching or please focus on your vowel alignments or please focus on consonants or so forth and so on and then you'll be um, marked based on this criteria here, including um, rehearsal technique, so forth and so on. Let's talk about Latin pronunciation. So um, <clears throat> there's lots of Latin pronunciations. I like to go with the ecclesiastical or the, the Latin, the, the, the church Latin, if you will, pronunciation. Um, just for everything, just because it's a nice blanket and it's really close to Italian. Um, of course, you'll have people who have composed requiems who are German or who are French. And so you have German Latin, you have French Latin, and that's based on <clears throat> those pronunciations or how the French would pronounce Latin or how the people in Germany, German people would pronounce Latin. Again, I go more for ecclesiastical Latin and less a conductor specifies, hey, we're going to go with X, Y, and Z, or just ask, hey, how do you want this pronounced? But for you, as the conductor, 
choir director, I will go with ecclesiastical Latin. Of course, you have your vowels here. Okay, and let's look at some IPA. So the written is the A, pronounced father, and this is our darker A, right? Not the ah, like patka, but ah, like father. Um, fed, this is your open E. You have your, for E, right? Closed E does not exist in this. For your I, you have a closed I. The I, open I, does not exist. So it's always going to be E as in feet. Never fit. Okay. Your O, so your O, my bad. <clears throat> it's always going to be open O as in open or fought. Never full, but <clears throat> far, uh, 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 like all, oh, sorry, fought, open, excuse me. Whenever you see a U, it's going to be your long U or, <clears throat> or your closed U. U as in food. And then whenever you see a Y, it's, always going to be, it's all going to be a closed I as in feet. I don't know why they did the transliteration of this. And that's what they do for the rest of the document, but it is annoying. So let's go through it. Um, also for your R's, it is not going to be American R's, but let's either flip them or roll them. So, <clears throat> Kyrie Leison, Kyrie Leison. There are no glottals, so I'm not going to sing Kyrie Eleison, but it's legato and elided Kyrie Eleison. We know this. Gloria in excelsis, okay, so forth and so on. And this goes through all the vowels, consonants. We have all the consonants here. So whenever you see this letter, it's like a hard K. So cum sancto spiritu, gloria camus de, and that's just a glorificamus de. They forgot a letter. Ubi caritas. And so you can go through these. Um, now I'm going to go back to announcements. Great. So a few changes, a few things for, for our next class on November 2nd, this upcoming Tuesday. We will be in the Hubbard room in, um, oops, in the Hubbard room. Sorry, got confused. <laughs> um, to get there, go upstairs to the main dining room. Tell the concierge that you're going to my classes. I've already passed through there by the time you get there. And then go straight down past the hallway on your right. And the door should be open. We will be retaking exam two then. So please be prepared. Please be prepared. Let's not have a repeat because your grades are not so good. Um, number three, all of you should have your Roman numeral analysis and form analysis for the Vivaldi done. Please overview this as a group before Tuesday's class. Also, put the IPA in your music based on the Latin. Lastly, um, what was I going to say? I forgot. I guess that's it. So you have your minimum analysis and your form analysis done. Oh, and then of course, don't forget the dis discussion discussion on Bach BWV four as digital homework. Number four, instead of submitting your digital notebook, the Vivaldi preparation score will take its place. Let's go over that now. Um, to see what it is and how it is, turn it in. Go to Course 10 Assessments, Assignments, Vivaldi Score Preparation. Follow the directions to the letter. It is due by November 8th, 2021 at 11.59 p.m., the day before our master class on Vivaldi. So I can look at your notes as we're doing this master class. Start practicing your piano skills to play the choir parts on the Vivaldi. You will be graded on this. Great. I have updated it and sent it to you all. Let's go to Assessments. Assignments. Score preparation. 
Let's look at the directions. All right. This is due. Da, 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 da. Complete the following in your score analysis as a PDF. Roman numeral analysis, form analysis, IPA, and tempo markings with a metronomical number. So if I were you, use the app Cam Scanner. After you've done put all these things in your score, use Cam Scanner. Um, take pictures of your score and then send that or email that to yourself. And then in the same PDF, I want something typed. So your character analysis should be typed, composer analysis, piece history, range, and tessitura of each voice part. Excuse me. And then, um, oh, erase that. There you go. And that's it. So you can type that into a Word document and then export that as a PDF. Email yourself your PDF of the score. So you have your PDF of your score and your PDF of the type thing and then just merge them together and turn all of that in as one document, okay? One document. Okay, I'll save and close that. <clears throat> if you have any questions, please let me know. But other than that, have a great day. Bye.